Absolutely. All right, folks, welcome and thank you for joining us for today's TPA Knowledge and Network on storytelling, specifically the title of our talk is how to create transformative storytelling for your audience and for yourself with our wonderful speaker, Judy Tsui. I want to also acknowledge this is co-sponsored by the State of Women, and we have the wonderful Anu in here who will talk to us at the end about that in case you want to join. Um, Thanks to the State of Women, this is also open to TPA members and friends. I will be monitoring the chat throughout the talk, um, but feel free to jump into the chat right now, introduce yourself, say where your name is, what your enterprise is, and who you are. TPA is all about networking, so if you're not yet a member, we again welcome you, and we offer these about once a month among the other programs. So I hope you can join us. I'll drop some links into the chat. Uh, my name is Amanda, pronouns she, her. I am overseeing the educational programming here. And um, any TPA member will have access to review this on demand. And so there's gonna be a lot of really great stuff. The other thing I wanted to point out really quickly before we dive in is that we also offer a mentorship program and we are currently matching members with mentors for our next season. So please sign up to be a TPA member if you're not already. If you are a member, check out the Slack, check your spam box if you didn't get the emails because you have until August 12th to sign up. Anyway, on to the main event. It's now my pleasure to welcome our wonderful speaker, Judy Tsui. Um, Judy lives, writes, and podcasts from sunny Cali, San Diego with mm -hmm. her daughter, Wilder Love. What a beautiful name. Uh, you might know her as the founder of Wild Hearted Words, a strategic content marketing agency that drives um, brand recognition and sales for health, wellness, and innovative tech clients. She's also the author of The Little Book of Tibetan Rites and Rituals, Simple Practices for Rejuvenating the Mind, Body, and Spirit, which is distributed by Simon & Schuster, something we could all learn from in the here and now. Oh my goodness. As a top-rated mentor, speaking of mentorships, with the Founder Institute, the world's largest pre seed accelerator program and a former yoga instructor. Judy's adept at teaching mindful solutions to achieving your professional and personal goals. So Judy, thank you so much for being here. Let me turn this over to you. Thank you so much. Um, it's lovely to meet all of y'all. Please, um, as Amanda mentioned, type in any questions in the chat and I'll go through. I've planned it out for about 10 to 15 minutes, but I tend to, you know, get really into what I'm presenting. So flag me <laughs> if it's starting to go long. Um, so as Amanda mentioned, I host uh, the Fuck Saving Face podcast, which yes, there's an expletive in it, and it's specifically designed for that reason to kind of catch attention, which I have a branding and marketing agency. So having that expletive in the title has proven interesting as a challenge to market. But I think that one of the reasons that I did it is because the whole podcast is designed to empower mental and emotional health for Asian Americans and voices of color. And I think that at this time more than ever, it's an opportunity for us to really, you know, stand up and speak up, which is what a lot of this podcast today is going to be about. So I fully believe that your voice needs to be heard and that representation matters. The more that you know, I've been doing DEI work, um, the more that I've been seeing how it truly makes a difference and creates a ripple effect for you know, generations to come. So I've been listening to a lot of different podcasts, specifically with hosts who are Black, Brown, you know, Asian, all different spectrums of color, essentially. And um, just hearing how there's a different lens when you look at systemic problems or when you have like a cultural lived experience. So now more than ever, I think that we, it's a wonderful opportunity with all the tools that we have, especially with what a is creating to be able to represent the global majority. Um, and, you know, hopefully with all of the training that I've done and the book that I wrote about Tibetan rights, um, there are a lot of people who have been, um, underprivileged or undervalued. And now is a wonderful time to start shining a light on that. So I used to teach a lot in yoga and say that from the beginning of time ever after, there will never, ever be another you. So you are designed to be uniquely you and your story, the way that you tell it, you know, all the things that you want to do with your life from a professional or personal standpoint, it's so uniquely, remarkably you. And to instead to not pretend or try to be anything else, especially what we see on social media, but to be you and quantum physics and all of the things that I'm learning about have definitely demonstrated that in the parallel universes and just like time and how time is relative. And truly, you know, if we view time differently, like you are going to be everlasting 
you know, have this forever impact. And so it's a beautiful way to kind of look at it. So today we're gonna to cover empowerment marketing and storytelling. We're gonna talk about um, the hero's journey and some of you may already know about this. And then talking about the know to grow your audience, just to really understand who you're speaking with to form that connection in order to continue to grow your listenership. Um, so I wanna pause really quick. Are there any questions thus far? because we're gonna take a moment and we're gonna dive into some breathing. So um, I had my daughter on Hawaii. Um, Hawaii is one of the most remarkable places to me. I have a very deep connection to Kauai. And so you'll see a lot of tropical elements in this presentation today. I'm hoping that I can kind of bring you to a place where you get to breathe and just enjoy. Our lives are so busy. And I just wanted to take a moment to take a deep breath with you and center and ground here. When we arrive at that place, it gives us an opportunity to really open up to kind of the creative portals that are around us and just to celebrate ourselves we show up each and every day in big and small ways so this is a wonderful opportunity just to acknowledge that so if you feel comfortable i'd like to invite you to just close your eyes wherever you are whether you're standing or you're sitting and just gently take a moment to arrive here now and you might be in a different time zone than i am i'm starting off my day so your day might have already been very, very busy, but just take a moment to connect to your breath. Become aware of how it feels in your body and start to notice your inhalation balanced by your exhalation. So if you're able to take a moment and bring all of your awareness to your breath, it automatically drops you into the present moment. Whatever thoughts, feelings, worries, concerns, they can start to fade away because in this moment, right here, right now, you are safe. And this is the only real moment we have right now that we're aware of. So arriving here now to create your story and to create your narrative. You already start to float your eyes open, coming back into the space. And we'll start to dive in. So empowerment marketing and storytelling. As I mentioned, I own a strategic uh, branding and content marketing agency. And so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I think that there are a lot of things about marketing traditionally that have been done. And as we're moving into Web3 and all these ways in which community and hearing people's voices makes such a big difference, there's a different way to speak to your audience and to speak about your podcast or your brand or your service or whatever it is that you're offering in a way that really resonates with your audience. And when you form those connections, it builds your listenership. It creates a memorable you know, um, brand for yourself and for whatever it is that you want to build moving forward. So Jonah Sachs, if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. It's called Story Wars, Why Those Who Tell and Live the Best Stories Will Rule the Future. Messages based on empowerment, which make the audience the hero and remind them of how full of potential they are, are proving to be social media ready. So a lot of times we are creating such great content, we're not really sure how to share it or in ways that drive conversion. But if you speak up to your audience, and I'll kind of describe the hero's journey coming up and remind them of who they're looking to become and how you are part of the mentor of that journey. It'll help to have them coming back to you, trusting your brand, your podcast, your service or product offering as an authority so that they can then continue to look to you to help navigate their journey. So empowerment marketing focuses on this top tier of Maslow's needs, which are being needs. And the object of these needs isn't something that you possess, it's something that you move towards. So it's an ideal kind of version of your goals. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the global majority, a lot of us are looking at our physiological needs. We need, you know, food, warmth, water, shelter. But as you have those needs start to be met, then it starts to move up the scale. And so as we have our basic needs met, we start to find community. And then from community, we start to find our self-purpose. And then from our self-purpose, we start to ask ourselves the bigger question of why are we here? What's the impact that we wanna make? How are we gonna grow? And so this is built within every single person that we're speaking to. And if we continue to understand who we're talking to and what it is that they're trying to do on this journey, we can start to walk with them on that journey and they look to us and build this trust and connection. 
So traditional marketing was always focused on inadequacy. It was saying like, you're not good enough or you need this car or you need this, you know, makeup or you need this to kind of create this like perfect image or however you, you know, want to feel fulfilled. So it's really building upon that kind of insecurity. And that's what I'm hoping we'll continue to move away from as we grow in our consciousness as a community and, you know, the planet. So the storytelling lesson number one is speaking up to your audience. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit more when we're talking about the hero's journey that's coming up next. So the hero's journey relies on growth that can never be fulfilled by others. So each one of us is on our own hero's journey, or I like to say our heroine's journey. And if you're doing good work, you're empowering your audience to see themselves as the emerging heroes and heroines of their journey, of their story, of whatever it is. So this um, graphic right here kind of talks about how here's the person, they feel this call to adventure, and then the adventure starts to happen. So they have to cross this threshold. But as they cross it, there's so many trials and tribulations, and then they start to find themselves in an abyss wondering like is this ever going to happen is this what i you know am meant to do am i ever going to be able to get through it and if they can make it through those trials and tribulations and that self-doubt they experience metamorphosis which then gives them this wisdom that they take back as this boon to return to the normal world and then they share that boon with others and it helps them to elevate their community all of their relationships the more that they become changed and learn and grow then the more you know like and this cycle it doesn't just happen once it's kind of like a upward moving spiral and it continues to move us forward in our lives. So the more that we grow and evolve, the more that journey becomes refined. And you'll see this hero's journey. You've probably heard this before, Joseph Campbell's work and a lot of different, you know, movies and books and everything that we have loved. And there's a reason that they're so popular. And the reason that we love them so much is there's a part of us, like a deep, visceral, primal part of us and a higher knowing that this is the journey that we are all on. And um, it's why it speaks to us so clearly and why we wanna see the heroes win. We wanna see them overcome their battles. We wanna see them you know, come back and help the world. So the call to adventure in strong storytelling brands is often expressed as the tagline. And I'm bringing this up because I'm curious as to, for a lot of you, if you have a tagline or if you have a call to adventure for your audience. So here are a couple of examples of different brands. This is their tagline and it is their call to adventure. So, you know, with Apple, it's always been think different. With Nike, it's just do it. And then you can see it play across in really strong brands. Like um, Tom's is a really another great brand about giving back and making sure that every one of your purchases creates an impact and helps someone else. So um, that's something that we can talk about later um, about whether or not you have a tagline, but to help you, you know, really refine like what it is that you're creating and why it is that you're creating, especially on those days when you feel overwhelmed, when there's just so much to do, when you're not sure if you're getting the feedback that you want from your audience, thinking about how you are helping to transform their lives and how you've transformed your own life and then being able to cultivate that and bring that forward and share that story. Um, so potentially some of you have podcasts that are about your brand, your service, whatever offering that you have. Um, so repositioning your mindset a little bit to think about how you are part of their journey and helping them actualize their full potential. So as I mentioned before, I love Hawaii. And one of the things that I like to think of is that your audience is currently potentially on a pain island. They have different things that they feel challenged with and you wanna help move them to their pleasure island. And so maybe you have some wisdom that you can offer them, what your service or your offering might be the answer to that. And so you provide and help navigate that journey for them to get there. Um, in that Jonas Sachs book, you can dive a little bit deeper into each of these ways to look at your brand and looking at your audience as the hero. So your offering and solution is not the hero. They are the hero. You are basically the mentor who helps guide them along. And so um, doing a bit of work on, you know, what your key benefit is. You might have heard this in marketing, your unique selling point, like your gift. Um, and then your core values plays into the voice that you have and the tone that you're going to use. So storytelling lesson number two, let your podcast and brand be part of the hero's journey. I actually have, if you want to go, um, I created a series of audios a while back um, that kind of talk about the hero's journey more in depth and how it pertains to your brand. So you can feel free to go there and grab that and listen to that if you want, or dive into Jonas Sachs book. There's a lot um, about just how to take that idea and apply it into what it is that you're doing. 
Um, so lastly, know to grow your audience via relationship building. So I've always said that, you know, um, I've worked with a lot of B2B business to business brands, a lot of B2C direct to consumer brands. And at the end of the day, you're still talking to a person. You still need to cultivate a relationship. So it doesn't, you know, quite matter um, if you're thinking about them from like a big entity perspective or a large mass, you actually need to think about cultivating a connection with who you're talking to. So the stronger your storytelling, the more memorable your brand. And people remember stories 22 times more than facts and figures. There's a line that I say to a lot of clients, which is um, stories sell and facts tell. And so the more that you can kind of create that narrative arc and that connection, so you're really drawing out the emotions, the more that people are going to remember you and what it is that you're doing. And when you're building a relationship with your audience, here are a few questions to think about. Um, it just helps you dive more into the clarity of who it is that you're talking to. I think a lot of times we have some sort of idea, but the clearer that you get, and I'll address this in the next slide, the more that you can directly speak to them. And when you speak to one person or this perceived customization idea that you're speaking to one person, the more that a lot of people resonate. So, um, you know, as Amanda mentioned, she found an article of mine that I wrote. I used to write for Mind Body Green and a lot of other different publications. And so what I would find is that drawing to the specifics and really writing from a personal narrative standpoint enabled so many people to connect with it, which was the opposite of what you would normally think. You think that you want to be more general in order to appeal to more people, but that's not actually what it is because we are all at the core dealing with that hero's journey, which has a lot of the similar elements. So people used to tell me that they may not have gone through exactly the same experiences that I have, but they knew exactly the feeling that I was talking about and started to think about it in their own lives. And the other powerful thing that happens with storytelling is that immediately your audience starts to put themselves in your shoes and vice versa. Your brain actually does something where it starts to move into what someone else is talking about. And it forms that connection, that empathy, that compassion. And so the more that you can kind of get focused on who it is that you're talking to, it lends a lot of clarity to your future marketing, to, you know, like understanding that those pain points to move them from that pain island to the pleasure island. Um, and, you know, when it comes to talking to your audience, there's two ways that you can do it. So um, you might not have thought about this before. And in a lot of marketing, it's just about removing the obstacles, knowing where your audience is hanging out, which is why that clarity really helps. If you know who you're talking to, you know where they're hanging out, and then you know exactly what they're going through to be able to talk to them to become that mentor. And so one of the ways to attract your audience is this doorway method, where, you know, you can just envision that you have clear doorways that people can enter. They know like, okay, so like if I am looking for this, I'm gonna walk through this doorway and access like this information. The other one is the worldview method. So your audience is very diverse. They're gonna have all these different kinds of backgrounds, but they're connected again by that common theme or that need. And so if you can unite them under that common idea, it really helps to create the messaging that you want to move forward. And again, thinking about just how much you can transform someone's life by offering and telling the stories that you do, the more that you gain clarity on that for yourself and for them, the more that you can kind of create that connection. So um, if you want to learn more about perceived customization and just about, you know, the way that the consumers psychology is. There's um, a book called The Ask Method by Ryan Levesque. And um, he was actually a client of mine for a while, but his perceived customization where he took a quiz that would show up on someone's website. And so you self-identify like what's most important to you. And then they would serve you up this email nurture sequence that would then, you know, kind of offer what you thought was really personalized to you, but was actually just because you self-identified and they had kind of just slightly catered their messaging a little bit for that. But the conversion rates went up a lot because people felt like you were talking to me, you know, essentially. Um, and in that, like, if you look deep more into consumer psychology, and this is getting more granular, you kind of learn about um, behavioral analysis and to understand that every single one of us is either moving away from something or we're moving towards something. So if something's either painful that we don't want and it's why we try to find another solution or there's something that we really do want and we're really motivated by that passion. And so we're gonna go towards it. And so if you can understand like what your audience is thinking about and where they're coming from and at what stage that you're meeting them at, then you can start to really create your storytelling so you can help to speak to this because there's these key motivators there. 
Um, and the levels of awareness, this is another book that you can dive into if you wanted to, but just understanding that people are going to meet your podcast, your brand, your offering at different stages. And the more aware that they are of what it is that you have to offer, the less you have to sell them on it because they already have built that trust with you. Whereas if they're unaware, then you have to kind of educate them more. And then from that education, then demonstrate why you're the optimal solution or platform or, you know, venue to get them to pay attention. So um, just again, this a lot goes into understanding your listenership and that the more you know them, the more that you can, you know, really drive home what it is that you're looking to offer. So when it comes to creating meaningful impact, I just wanted to give you an example. So this was an uh, email that I had gotten from my website based on someone who had done a Google search about, you know, which I thought was incredible that they typed in these words, mother doesn't love me, Asian American. And then they found my podcast. <laughs> my podcast is slightly optimized for SEO, but not as much as it could be that they found this podcast episode. And then that she was saying that, you know, um, she's letting go of this abusive relationship with her mother, but she's living with her mom and, you know, having these like challenges and barriers and then still being able to find herself within that. So I always think, and people used to tell me this a lot when I um, would get a lot of emails from the people who would read the articles that I would publish. A lot of editors would say like, for every one email that you're getting or every comment that you're getting, there are so many more people who felt and are thinking the same things. They've just not taken the time to reach out to you. So just to remember that, that you are like speaking to someone and someone is listening. Um, and, you know, who knows like how transformative that could be but like one little pivot can be so remarkable so again this is kind of going to that hero's journey so being that mentor because she was saying that I offered wisdom for her and then she was able to take that and go on her own hero's journey um, so transformative lesson number three really get to know your audience and build that relationship with them to increase listenership so for the next things, um, I think when I talk to a lot of different people, you know, as um, Amanda mentioned, I'm a mentor with the Founder Institute. So I see a lot of companies at different stages of their business building and whether that's ideation to, you know, they've already got an offering, they're already getting out there in the market or they're seeking seed funding across the board. It doesn't matter if they've got like some offering that's going, you know, out into the masses and it's getting traction everybody always needs to come back to these core values because whenever they want to start looking into like marketing or how to grow or how to like actually appeal to someone who's actually going to pay attention and listen, it always goes down to understanding like who you are, your core values, what it is that you're standing for, understanding what kind of transformation or wisdom that you can help offer on that call to adventure for your audience. And then just having clarity around who your audience is and what it is that they're looking for. Because the more that you can know that, the more that everything else becomes streamlined. Um, and if you're curious about like maybe your podcast is at a time where you're advertising or you're looking into all of that, whenever people ask me like what's a valuable place to invest their resources, I always ask if these core things are done. Because if they're not done, then all of that message is going to be really muddy. It's going to be a waste of time and energy and resources. Sources. And also, if you're not ready and you don't have kind of that clear strategic thinking to capture your audience and what you'd like for them to do, how to move them in that, you know, customer journey of your own um, brand or your company or whatever it is, then even if they came to you, you wouldn't be able to serve them and you wouldn't be able to really provide kind of the offer and the value that they need. So just getting back to these core things is really important. And that's it. I actually fit into the time frame. <laughs> I'm quite surprised by myself. <laughs> that was amazing. I have never heard of this type of marketing before. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, before thank I you. pass this on to the open call for questions, which we'll have for about 15 minutes before we do the networking. Um, let me just scroll up here. We had a really good question from Kevin. I'm going to just read it verbatim. Actually, Kevin, can I invite you to come on mic and read it so people don't have to hear my Midwest accent this entire time? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me? You sound can great. You? Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I, it was a very basic question was that like, how would you define a, a transformative storytelling? I think you kind of laid it out with these different um principles but yeah yeah um i mean from a 
talking to your audience standpoint, I feel like it kind of goes back to that hero's journey where everyone's looking to move up into that hierarchy of needs to really understand what their purpose is. And so, you know, transformative could be that people are healing from a certain, um, their podcast hosts who I know who are speaking to people who are recovering from cancer and like what that journey is. And then there are other people who are looking to transform their business and elevate and create more revenue and all of that kind of stuff. So understanding your audience and what that kind of like change is that they're looking for and what impact um, that they're looking to you as an authority figure to help them make um, is what I envision. For From a personal standpoint, I always feel like it's rooted in connection and it's rooted in like, I've always said that um, I think every single person is on their own wisdom journey they're like you know seeking to learn about themselves better how to engage with the world better you know how to bring their unique gift to life and so as a host from like that perspective i think it's your own wisdom journey that you're on and that's the transformation for a host that that the host can be experiencing um and then with you know, storytelling, being able to position that narrative in a way. So sometimes it's really factually based, you know, especially in the crypto world, like, you know, reading charts, like all that kind of stuff, how to learn about all of that kind of stuff. So the storytelling is around that. It's around like finances, numbers, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's like the therapeutic storytelling too, um, connecting on a mental, emotional level, or even like a psychological, spiritual level. Does that help? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Um, oh, and I had one other thing. Uh, when you were talking about the, I think it was called the doorway method. Mm -hmm. um, could we see that slide again? Totally. Thank you. And I can email this too um, to make it easier. Awesome. Oh, that, that would be super helpful. So I just wanted to say really quick with the doorway method. Um, so there's this book by Sean D'Souza. Um, and um, I think it's like the psychology of pricing or dartboard pricing is what he talks about. And he always says that like, if you imagine that there's a you're at the airport, and there's a conveyor belt and the luggage is coming off your goal uh, as a business owner or whatnot, um, is to remove the luggage off of the conveyor belt so that your audience member can just walk out the airport like you know and have everything that they need so the more that you can think about whatever obstacles they're experiencing and you helping them to get that off the conveyor belt the more that they're going to be you know in your sphere listening to you Awesome insights, Judy. And thank you so much for those great questions, Kevin. Um, just a quick reminder that this and the recording will be available on the TPA members portal. So that's another great thing that we have to look forward to. Um, feel free to raise your questions. We have uh, time for at least two or three more for, for the wonderful Judy. I learned so much from this. <laughs> Otherwise, I can ask a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I will kick this off really quickly. Um, tell me a little bit more about how you integrated positive or humanistic psych. Oh, actually, Kevin, why don't you? I was getting a little intellectual there. <laughs> Go for it, Kevin. Wait, what? What? What's your? What were you I saw you raise your hand. Did you have a question? Oh no, I'm sorry. I was just doing a thumbs up that this was oh, a great presentation. No worries. <laughs> well, verbalizing a thumbs up is a nice affirmation. I <laughs> pay attention to this talk, so points to Kevin. <laughs> I'll continue along that line really quickly. Judy, what I I studied psychology and used to work in that capacity, and I remember um, you bringing up Maslow, which was beautiful to see. I know that that has informed marketing, but. Um, Tell me a little bit more about how you have come to really embrace that model of meeting those basic existential needs all the way up. I, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm new to marketing. No, and I think that, um, you know, this article has been circulated before, and I think it's come up again recently, is that like, you know, um, up to a certain income level, like it does make a difference. But then I think like $70,000 is like the mark where like anything that you're earning beyond that, it just creates like smaller, you know, increments and in happiness, depending on where you are. So I always thought that that was so fascinating, because we live anybody who's living in the United States in this, you know, society that's very often materialistic, or like, you know, for example, like, I just listened to a podcast about like, the car industry and like where we are now and how like the leasing thing and used cars and it's just crazy but it's because we have such a culture like tied to 
you know, that status symbol and that aesthetic. But I always find consumer psychology and humanistic, you know, anything about people so fascinating to me. And that once we meet those basic needs and how lucky we are, um, if you're if you've got a roof over your head and a bed and all that kind of stuff, having taught yoga and whatnot, being able to see that everyone is indeed on that journey and that, um, you know, I I've also been around a lot of like higher echelon. I used to be an editor for this live conscious music and events um, company. And so I had an opportunity to meet like Don Miguel Ruiz, see around Deepak Chopra, you know, interview Tara Brack, like all of these people who everybody looks up to because they are spiritually significant and they've done all this work. And then because I was, you know, an editor and in marketing, I also got to see very human sides of them. And so I always find that so interesting that like, you know, we are human and yet we are aiming to evolve and being able to see that so clearly from the students who I would teach or, you know, from these spiritual teachers and then from everyone who's seeking. So it's just been um, such an interesting thing to be a part of and to witness um, everyone at different stages of evolution. But there is just that deep sense of seeking. And Carl Jung, I think, has a quote where he says, like, there is nothing so satisfying to us as human beings as to know the why behind something. We are always trying to figure that out. And so it's like our constant curiosity that's driving us to move forward. And if you're able to take that and, you know, understand, like, what your audience is doing and like what's driving them um, from a marketing perspective or from a connection standpoint, it really helps to kind of hone in what it is that you're doing and offering. I love that. And I like how you're name checking Carl Jung. He had a lot to yeah. say about storytelling and archetypes, yeah, totally universal aspects that I could geek out about that all day. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I wanted to open this up. I mean, we have a, still have a nice fervent audience here. If anybody else has a, a question about this, just beautiful. I, I very much love this talk. Miriam, go for it. Thank you for your question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, Hi. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm new to podcasting and have a, cup, a proposal currently going with Spotify. And I, but I, this is a question I have because I, I come from like, I am a content creator and I have built a very mm -hmm. big community around like, um, you know, talking about fat phobia and weight stigma mm -hmm. in the Latinx community. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. very specific. I know what I deliver for them, but you know, mm -hmm. I want a podcast. What I want to do with my podcast is like become, I create like common knowledge of mm -hmm. this information, right? I want mm -hmm. people beyond my circle, but mm -hmm. you know, the question around, um, around audience is really hard for me because it's like, who I'm speaking to are the people who are in fact part of my community. That's who like, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of like my brand. And so mm -hmm. how do I, I don't know how to like get, like how to really think about an audience that's bigger than that. Yeah. So you're looking to kind of make what it is that you have in a niche um, audience more mainstream and get the more mainstream audience to pay attention to like kind of yeah, normalize or like how to articulate, Yeah. How to articulate that like, it is, I mean, I truly believe that it is like a com it's a thing that people mm -hmm. seek and want. I totally. just like wanna be honest to my audience who's mm -hmm. following me, my loyal yeah. people. Like how do totally. I jump forward? Yeah. Yeah, you have um, a wonderful opportunity there because um, you know, for it hasn't stopped, but the body positivity movement has gone, um, you know, in a bunch of different directions. And so um there's this and you might all have known about it, but Haro, help a reporter out. So they're often sending out emails. You can sign up for it. It's free. They're seeking different experts and like, you know, people who can offer quotes because journalists are always looking to for people to talk to. And so you can start paying attention to that because there are opportunities there where different journalists may be writing about articles around health and physical health and like, you know, body image stuff and start to lend your voice to that um, on different channels. That's one way to kind of go about it. Um, I think the other thing too is looking at influencers and so what it is that they're doing. So Lizzo is super, you know, all about body positivity and really embracing like who she is. And a lot of people have like followed her for that with all differing types of, you know, body um, image challenges or issues or what, whatever it is. And so looking to some of those influencers and how they're talking about it and like what avenues that they're using to kind of promote that and getting yourself and your brand also aligned with that and even sparking conversations. Like, um, I think that if you start thinking broader, so, you know, with body positivity and also with the um, community that you're serving, I would say that 
in the school system, there's a lot of stuff that they're doing right now to kind of encourage that acceptance. And so is there a thought leader within like, you know, Dr. Shafali Tsubari or like even your local schools, like how can you start to generate traction in your local media about that and about like starting from a younger age? And so I think that a lot of the times when we are doing what it is that we're doing, we're so, and I'm, I, do this to myself too. Like I, I just focus from it from like my point of view. But the thing is, like as you start to broaden your perspective and think about all the different opportunities and the people that you can impact and help and serve, then it starts to create so many different opportunities. So I would say like look at partnerships, alignments, um, influencers, look at organizations that are doing work around this. Look at media channels and articles and reporters who are like looking for articles around this. And anytime that you see someone having a conversation on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn especially about a certain topic, I would start, um, and Twitter, This I recommended this to a client recently and she was really surprised at how well it did for her business, but um, starting to get involved in those conversations and adding your input and responding to people gets people to pay attention because not only are you getting in front of that person who you're looking to spark a conversation with, but all of their followers followers are also starting to pay attention to you and what it is that you're doing. And so it starts to create this organic opportunity to kind of establish you as a thought leader. Does that help? Okay. Awesome. Judy, thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording now because again, this is the end of the recorded session. Now talk about tautology there. Um, but I just wanted to encourage anybody who's watching to definitely um, check out our future offerings. We have um, September 1st, we have an open talk on scripted fiction. So if you are a big fan of storytelling, well, Bob's your uncle there. Or maybe, maybe Bob is not your uncle. Um, 